Um, Tom and I uh, have been friends and uh, worked together before um, for quite a while. We know each other originally from the Costume Designers Guild Awards, which we've produced for the last 13 years. And Tom is a costume designer. He's actually the costume designer on Saturday Night Live for the last 20 years. So that's our connection. It does terrific work there, absolutely. And, and uh, Tom, was it, I mean, I, I guess being so immersed in the world of SNL, um, was this always a thought that maybe this would make for a great uh, documentary, or was it something that you needed a, a person who's not in that world to come well, in and tell you? Uh, yeah, I, I think it's a little bit of both. Um, we were having lunch one day and talking about the things that had been going on about the 40th anniversary and that sort of stuff, and I think it had been germinating in my mind for a little bit. And since I had been there for 20 years and you begin to think, why am I still here? What, <laughs> what is, what's, what's drawing me here? Why am I staying here? And sort of it kept coming back to this idea of what is SNL about? What is SNL about? There's such a bigger context to that. And then through the course of having lunch, you know, really working on just the kernel of, you know, what this idea was from an anthropological standpoint. And then JL and I, by the end of the lunch, sort of had fleshed it out and started running with it. Now, you guys cannot be the first people who have approached Lauren Michaels with, with this kind of an idea. So I wonder, what was it that, how did that, how did that uh, go down? And what was it that made him say yes to you, where I would guess fairly safely that he said no to a lot of other people? I think our favorite think. thing is that he said no to Bill O'Reilly. Ah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that so, was our little yeah, inside joke. That was our little shout out to that situation by including yeah. Bill in the doc. Yeah. Um, uh, Tom and I went in together yeah. to, to pitch it to Lauren, and um, I think it was a combination of two really important things that were different than some of the folks that have come to him in the past. Timing, super essential. He was ready and open to the idea because it was um, the 40th anniversary, so we sort of tied it to that. And Tom, so it's yeah. the two T's, timing and Tom. <laughs> Tom has a relationship with him that's pretty fundamental, and um, and a, there's a significant amount of trust. So myself and the rest of our producing team, several of whom, of whom are here, um, we benefited from Tom. <laughs> We're all one degree of Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and Tom would, I mean, it really wouldn't have been possible in even a, a fraction of the way that it turned out without that kind of cooperation, right? Because you guys, seems like you got unprecedented access to people and places. Even just the opening shot where we right. see the camera move is incredible. Right. Who's right. ever seen that view before? Right. It, I do have to say, I mean, you know, all of the people involved in the film have done an amazing job. So I just opened the door and they <laughs> ran with it. <laughs> you know, part of my job was to sort of steer them clear of certain landmines that might be happening while we were shooting and that sort of stuff. So, Go over there, don't go over there, move over there. But, um, you know, we had an amazing crew who was like, they really knew when to push in and when to pull away. And really they, I say the director and cinematographer, those guys were like little ninjas who running around and never really getting in anybody's way. And half of them didn't even know we were ever shooting the film. You know, when at the end of it, they were like, wait, you guys were even here? What was going on? And that was sort of, what we really wanted for them to have no idea what was even going on. Now, with, I think, 82 minutes, you had to obviously make a lot of decisions about what goes in, what goes out. Um, and I found it interesting that the attention is less on the creation or the, the, the way that the show works than it is on the role of the show in society and sort of the way a show comes together. And um, I guess, if was that always the intention from the start, or how did that... How'd you guys well, write? Well, first of all, thank you for framing the question that way. I wish we could take you <laughs> on all of our outings because you nailed it. That's exactly it. It's truly that was, I think, right. the fundamental thing that um, that that inspired both Tom right. and I. I think it's fair to say yeah. at the very beginning was that we wanted to do something totally different, and we wanted to really elevate the show in a lot of ways and show that it's while it is indeed a sketch comedy show and it's it's hilarious it's a lot more than a sketch comedy show and it's become this interesting barometer in which we can sort of measure what's happening in our country at any given time it's this little time capsule and that notion is what really appealed to us is that there's been amazing retrospectives done on Saturday Night Live for many years, there's decade after decade. Ken Bowser did a phenomenal job with those. There's an incredible book. Yeah. There's, um, you know, there's just tremendous materials about the making of the show, and we didn't want to do that. It's been done, and it's been done well. So, as a as a sort of respect for those that mm -hmm. came before us, we wanted to do something with a completely fresh perspective. 
I think while we talked about some difficult issues, it was still respectful. Yeah. So it was done in a way that, you know, again, it wasn't about the show per se and the controversy that surrounded the show. Rather, it's significant controversies and issues that are facing our country in which the show reflected. And I mean, certainly if we're talking about um, racial diversity, it's a very, <laughs> it's a pretty timely issue um, in our country, and it's just reflected on the show. And I think it was important to us that we show, um, you know, that it that it never was, you know, oh, it was it was one way this uh, era, and now it's a different way this era. It's like, well, from 1975 all the way to 2015, racial diversity has been and is currently an issue. Yep. So that's that's the same with our country and with Saturday Night Live. And I think, right. you know, all of the topics that you brought up. So I don't think it's in, in any way sort of an attack on the show. Rather, it's just acknowledging. A, you know, a dialogue that's been there for a long time. Sure. Yeah. Now, to come back to this Bill O'Reilly point that you brought up <laughs> earlier, uh, there were some people that obviously you expect you're going to see Tina Fey right. or somebody in this, but uh, Giuliani or O'Reilly or some of these other folks that, that appear um, would not be obvious choices to somebody, and so I just wonder how you decided who was and, and, and wasn't going to be included in terms of the talking head portions. Yeah, I mean, I think, again, it's definitely a collection of all of our filmmaking team. We had a phenomenal filmmaking team. So um, we have um, really strong producers and um, a talented director, and we all sat in a room and said, you know, let's look at sort of key pivotal moments in history through this 40-year window and look at when did we feel as a collective team that those um, um, sort of historical acts in America were reflected on Saturday Night Live. So it wasn't what's the funniest sketch or what's the most popular, you know, um, actor. It was, you know, what actually resonated. And I think so Giuliani, you bring up as an example, you know, 9-11 was obviously a pivotal moment in our country and how a comedic show responds to a tragedy like that is is quite telling and is an important sort of, you know, pinpoint in history. So Giuliani was an integral part of that and therefore it made sense to have him. And I think for Bill O'Reilly, it was, you know, a lot of people perceive it as a liberal show. It's entertainment, you know, it's a comedy show. Um, and we felt like it was important to have a conservative voice. And, um, and of course, there was the additional benefit of the fact that he was declined to do the documentary, right. so it entertained us. But well, One question I have for you, Tom, is that having been there for so long, did doing this uh, examination of the show teach you anything that you didn't already know about the way that it, it operates or has, you know, came to be or anything else, anything that you really learned through it? Um. No, I mean, certainly one of the things I learned, you know, the whole creation in the 70s and how the show, and that, the, the germination of how the show really began and all that sort of stuff. And when asking Lauren some of those questions, some of those questions were more about, well, what do I want to know from him? Mm -hmm. um, you know, I've read a lot of stuff about the show and that sort of stuff, and I've spoken to him a lot about the show, but a lot of that was like, well, you know, what, uh, what did I want to know when we were trying to come up with the questions? Now, do you think that uh, you start to, you do touch upon uh, the role of SNL in today's society versus mm -hmm. 1975, and I guess, what, I wonder what your conclusions are, um, having really looked at it under the microscope here, is it, what, what's the state of SNL going forward? Do you feel that it can be as culturally important and uh, relevant in a world in which there are now, instead of three channels, like in 1975, uh, now hundreds, you've got to compete with the internet, which although they have sort of embraced the way of using that smartphone, all of this, is right. it, what's, what's the future look like for them? I mean, yes, that's uh, definitely a silver, you know, sort of a crystal ball <laughs> yeah. type of question. But I think one of the things that we've talked about a lot since making the film is that Saturday Night Live, one of the things that differentiates it from sort of all of the other programs out there and, and makes it such a unique entity is that it has this really interesting balance of paying complete and total respect and credence to its history and its legacy and its tradition. The structure remains the same. The cold open remains the same. You know, this history and branding of the show remains intact, while at the same time, every single week, it completely represents what's happening in the country at that moment in that current event sort of window, right? So it changes with the times, but at the same time stays the same. And I think that's the magic of it. And we addressed a little bit in the documentary itself about the changing media landscape and how Saturday Night Live has changed to accommodate that. You know, Andy Samberg spoke at length about that. And I think it just speaks so strongly of the show that still today it is quite, you know, it is, you know, in the sort of forefront, it is a water cooler show. 
I don't know how many of you have had this, but still to this day I say, if I see something political happen or I see something pop culture happen, I go, I can't wait to see what they do about this on Saturday. And so that's kind of been ingrained in us, and it's generational. So while there is indeed so many more places to get your content and there's platforms changing, it's really the core, as we all know in the filmmaking community, it's the core of the content that's important. And as long as they keep you know, bringing that, I yeah. think that I think it'll find its voice. So that's our perception, at least, you know, right. from having, yeah.